questions. Okay, so this is for a poetry English class, so we're going to ask you to do a short writing exercise. So if you've got a paper and pen, I hope you do. If you don't, borrow one. Um, what we're going to ask you to do is to write a poem. And we know how much everybody loves writing a poem. So there is one rule, and that is that you have to use at least five words that we've generated or that you've generated on the board for a in your poem. And poetry doesn't have to make sense, doesn't have to rhyme, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, near the end of end of the our lesson segment, there will be an opportunity to share what the open mic on the board is about. So if you want to write something that you can share, that would be good. Just be aware that nobody signs up. We're going to force somebody to show <laughs> Specifically, Daniel. Okay. We might not actually do that. I haven't decided yet. Um, yeah, so um, we're going to give you a few minutes. We're going to stop talking so you can think what a poem you want to write. And in a, uh, in a, I've seen this done in a grade 9 class, and it worked really well. Generally, it took about 25 minutes, though, to write the poem. So we're sort of forcing it's going to be about five or so minutes. Um, okay. So that's about five minutes. Um, who would like or need another minute or two to finish up? Show of hands, yes? A couple? How many? Most people are done? Thumbs? Okay, so if you're still writing, you can continue to do that even though we're doing other things now. Yeah, we're actually going to switch gears, but we're using English and poetry as a vehicle to teach about diversity and social justice. So we're going to show you a clip from the movie Boys Don't Cry. And it's about the story of Brandon Tina, who is a transgender female to male who was raped and murdered in December 1993 in Humboldt, Nebraska. He was 21 years old at the time. Um, the clip we are showing may be a trigger for people. It is really intense and emotional. So if you feel, for any reason, feel free to leave the room, feel free to do so. How are you guys doing? Thumbs? Okay, Ashley has a story of Matthew Shepard for you. On Tuesday, October 6, 1998, at approximately 11.45 p.m., 21-year-old Matthew Shepard, a gay college student attending the University of Wyoming, was kidnapped from a bar by 21-year-old Aaron McKinney and 21-year-old Russell Henderson. Pretending to be gay, the two men lured Matthew Shepard into their truck, drove him to the outskirts of Laramie, robbed him, beat him with a pistol, tied him to a buck rail fence, and left him to die. The next day at about 6 p.m., 18 hours after the attack, he was discovered and taken to a hospital. He never regained consciousness and died five days later on Monday, October 12th, with his family by his side. One of the last things Matthew Shepard did that Tuesday night was attend a meeting of the University of Wyoming's Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Association. The group was putting final touches on a plan for Gay Awareness Week, scheduled to begin the following Sunday, October 11th, coinciding with National Coming Out Day. Planned campus activities included a film showing, an open poetry reading, and a keynote speaker. That keynote speaker was Leslie Newman, the author of this book. Both of the murders, Brandon Tina from the movie and Matthew Shepard from this book, led to increased lobbying for hate crime laws in the United States. Both of them were 21 when they were killed. This book is called October Morning, A Song for Matthew Shepard. It's written by Leslie Ann Newman, and it is an anthology of poetry about the circumstances and aftermath of Matthew Shepard's murder. And I'm going to include a brief disclaimer. While the poems in this book are inspired by actual events, they do not in any way represent the statements, thoughts, feelings, opinions, or attitudes of any actual person. The statements, thoughts, feelings, opinions, and attitudes conveyed all belong to the author. And so now we're going to read a selection of poems from the book. The first one is called, Where is my boy? Where is the boy, soft boy who sits in the chair with me on his lap and his hands in my hair? Where is the sad boy who tickles my ears while telling me all of his dreams and his fears? Where is the sweet boy who loves me so much his whole face lights up at my purr or my touch? Where is the boy he's been out half the night? This just isn't like him, it doesn't seem right. Is he gazing at stars? Is he under the moon? Is he sick? Is he hurt? Is he coming home soon? Where is the boy? Will he ever be back? I'm cold and I'm lonely and I need a snack. Why has he left me alone for so long? Where is my boy? I'm afraid something's wrong. So now I have a quote from a friend of Matthew Shepard. I know how much he loved his cat, Tina Labrie. This one's 
someone fall through the fence that night. I held him all night long. He was heavy as a broken heart. Tears fell from his unblinking eyes. He was dead weight, yet he kept breathing. He was heavy as a broken heart. His own heart wouldn't stop beating. He was dead weight, yet he kept breathing. His face streaked with moonlight and blood. His own heart wouldn't stop beating. The cold wind wouldn't stop blowing. His face streaked with moonlight and blood. I tightened my grip and held on. The cold wind wouldn't stop blowing. We were out on the prairie alone. I tightened my grip and held on. I saw what was done to this child. We were out on the prairie alone. Their truck was the last thing he saw. I saw what was done to this child. I cradled him just like a mother. Their truck was the last thing he saw. Tears fell from his unblinking eyes. I cradled him just like a mother. I held him all night long. Okay, so I'm going to be reading one now called Heartfelt Apology, and it mimics a rather famous poem by William Carlos Williams, This Is Just to Say, um, which is about eating plums in an ice box, and obviously the subject material for this is quite different, so um, that's an interesting contrast with dark and light material. So it's called Heartfelt Apology. This is just to say, I'm sorry, I kept beating and beating inside your shattered chest. Forgive me for keeping you alive so long. I knew it would kill me to let you go. And so that's actually told from the point of view of his heart. Uh, the next one I'm going to read is called Mercy, and to fill you a little bit, uh, to fill you in on this poem a little bit, uh, the jury during this trial of Matthew Shepard um, called for the death penalty against Aaron McKinney, uh, one of the men responsible for the death of Matthew Shepard. Um, and in court, uh, Dennis Shepard, the father of Matthew Shepard, said this in response. Mr. McKinney, I give you life in the memory of one who no longer lives. So it's called mercy. At the bitter end, a matter of life and death. Mercy for the boy. And yeah, just to kind of take that into context, um, you can consider the fact that in medieval England, or even long before that, one death was used to avenge another. Um, that same archaic principle uh, is still in use in legal systems. Uh, so just consider that. <clears throat> the minute it happened, my silver sequin sling back slid back into the closet. The minute it happened, my glittery gold gown slipped back into the closet. The minute it happened, my fluffy feather boa slithered back into the closet. The minute it happened, my wavy, waist-length wigs slumped back into the closet. The minute it happened, I dragged my sorry ass back into the closet, slapped the door shut, and swallowed the key. That one is called the, the Drag Queen. Um, the book has a whole bunch of like accompanying quotes as you go through. This one was, if I were a homosexual <clears throat> in Laramie, I would hang low, very low. And that was from the manager of the bar that Matthew Shepard was abducted from, I suppose. Yeah, so I'm just going to touch briefly on a legal aspect of the case I found particularly interesting. Um, the defense attorneys for the two men who murdered Matthew Shepard um, used what they called, uh, it's called the gay panic defense. Um, and basically, this defense argues that both men experienced temporary insanity as a result of unwanted advances, romantic and sexual, on part of Matthew Shepard. Um, it's obviously ludicrous in its nature, and it was thrown out of court um, almost instantly by the judge. Um, but what's interesting about it is the fact that by virtue of its existence, uh, this um, gay panic defense actually carries legal validity uh, in the United States. Um, yeah, and it's also important to note that there are legal structures obviously still in place that support homophobia. Um, yeah, we also all recognize the need uh, for discussion and that this is a rather heavier topic we're just kind of laying on everyone on this Friday morning. Um, so we have asked Carrie for permission to uh, just delve deeper into this and kind of unpack what we've brought to the surface here. Um, so if anyone has questions, concerns, thoughts, um, when this presentation is done, we have uh, about 15 minutes or so just to hash things out if that's necessary. Um, so we're going to move into the open mic portion of our presentation. If anyone has anything they'd like to share, just like things they've jotted down, I don't know, doodles, anything you've got, um, feel free just to raise your hand and let us know. 
Poetry is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little heavier today, but yeah. Thanks. Does anyone have anything they'd love to share? Or would you like another couple minutes to work on your poems? Well, I can write in the mood, but my poem is not. Yeah. If you got a, if you, if you got a poem that's anything, not like yeah. that, then yeah. It's probably better to like. <laughs> 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 I can write in the mood. Yeah. It's not. I feel disrespectful right now. No. I just wrote, good grief, this will be the death of me. I'm at a loss to what to say. As this is quite a tragedy, I bid you all a good day and hope to see you in the morning. Oh. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> that was right. Anyone else have anything you to share? Okay. Well, we'll move into. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, I know. yeah, I really appreciate that.